Today we'll talk about another interesting topic, refraction at spherical surfaces. When waves strike a spherical surface like a lens, what happens? Let's start with the basics. Let's imagine that this is a glass slab here and this is air surrounding the glass slab. So let's try to find out the equation when uh, you know a ray comes and it gets refracted from this spherical surface. So let's say this is an object here which is emitting a ray that is striking the spherical surface and forming an image right here. This is the normal at the point of contact and as you see this normal at the point of contact passes through the center of curvature of the spherical surface. This is angle theta, the angle of incidence and this is angle phi, the angle of refraction. So what will be the equation of refraction here in terms of mu1, mu2 and the image distance and the object distance? Let's find out. Let's assume that this angle here, the angle that the incident ray makes with the principal axis is alpha. Let's assume that the angle the normal makes with the principal axis is beta and the angle that the refracted ray makes with the principal axis is gamma. Now we already know that by Snell's law 1 mu 2 that is the refractive index of this class with respect to air is equal to sine theta divided by sine phi where theta is the angle of incidence and phi is the angle of refraction. We've already studied this. Now if theta and phi are very small, that is this incident ray is, uh, you know, it's making a very small angle with the normal at the point of contact. It's almost perpendicular to the spherical surface. In that case, sine theta can be approximately taken to be theta and sine phi will become phi. Now we already know that theta here is equal to beta plus alpha. We know that from 10th class geometry. Because you see, beta plus alpha plus this angle OQC here is 180 degrees. And similarly, theta plus angle OQC is 180 degrees. So that means theta is equal to alpha plus beta. There you go. And similarly, phi here will be equal to beta minus gamma. Because phi plus gamma will similarly be equal to beta. And therefore, phi will be equal to beta minus gamma. Again, by 10th class geometry. So this is our equation. So if you put mu2 by mu1 equal to beta plus alpha divided by beta minus gamma, this is what you get here. Now gamma here is pq by pi because as we've already concluded the angles alpha, beta and gamma are also very small. Alpha plus beta is equal to theta. Clearly alpha and beta too must be very small. So similarly gamma is also very small. Now gamma if you look closely can be taken to be pq divided by pi because gamma will approximately be equal to tan gamma which is clearly equal to pq upon pi if we take this arc to be very small in length you know so small that pq can be assumed to be a straight line instead of an arc I know we're making a lot of assumptions right here but they generally do hold for small values of theta similarly alpha can be written as pq by po alpha can be approximated as tan alpha which is the same as pq by po and beta what is beta beta is clearly pq by pc because beta can also be written as tan beta approximately which is approximately equal to pq by pc there you go we've substituted the values what is pi pi is clearly plus v the image distance as you can see i is where the image is formed p as you can see is the center of the spherical surface so clearly pi will be equal to plus v now we've written plus because the positive direction is the direction of the incident ray and since the incident ray is moving to the right we've written the image distance as plus v similarly po is the object distance minus u and pc is the radius of curvature we already know that because the normal passes through this point now if we substitute these values this is what we get as you can see, mu2 by v minus mu1 by u equal to mu2 minus mu1 by r. This is a very important formula and you must remember it. In fact, for any two surfaces, you know, like when light gets refracted through a spherical surface, you can always use this formula, always, and you must remember it. Here, mu2, you know, is the refractive index of the medium into which the light is going mu1 is the refractive index of the medium you know 
from which the light is coming. R is the radius of curvature of the spherical surface across which the refraction is taking place. V is the image distance and U is the object distance. If you take mu1 as, you know, 1 because the refractive index of air is 1. So if we put u mu1 as 1, you know, this is the equation you get. So that's it. We've derived the basic fundamental formula for refraction at a spherical surface. So if you want to see a more realistic view of the formula that we just derived, you can see a real object here and a real image here. And this surface here is a spherical surface. As you can see, as we keep on, you know, increasing the radius of curvature, the distance of the image from the pole keeps increasing. That's because, you know, even physically, the higher the radius of curvature, you know, the longer distance the light rays have to travel before they converge. Similarly, you know, as you keep increasing the refractive index, the real image keeps coming nearer and nearer, you know, to the curved surface. This is the curved surface. This is because as the refractive index increases, the ability, you know, of the other material, of this material on the right side, to converge the light rays, to change the path of the light rays, increases. So, this is a small animation, you know, showing how we, the image distance, varies with change in the radius of curvature and the refractive index. Now let's have a look at what the transverse magnification will be when light gets reflected from a spherical surface. So we'll place this object OA in front of the spherical surface. Now we already know that the formula for transverse magnification is image length divided by object length with proper sign. In this case, the image will be formed like this here at IA dash. So transverse magnification will clearly be equal to minus IA dash because the image is facing downwards divided by plus OA. Now if you consider these two triangles here, triangle AOC and triangle A dash IC, you'll see that they are similar triangles so because this angle is the same as this angle and similarly this angle and this angle are equal to 90 degrees. So as in the case of all similar triangles, the sides will be proportional. So, IA dash divided by AO will be the same as IC divided by OC, like this, minus IA dash divided by OA, which is the magnification, will be equal to minus IC divided by OC. Now, what are IC and OC? Clearly, IC is the same as PI minus PC, there is no doubt about it, and similarly, OC is the same as PO plus PC. Now if we look carefully, we'll see that PI is V, the image distance, because I is the distance of the image from P. Similarly, PC is the radius of curvature. After all, C is the center of curvature. PO is the object distance, U. And when we substitute these values, we get M equal to R minus V by R minus U. And V can then substitute the value of r from this equation that we just derived. Remember this equation, you know, that we just derived for light when it gets refracted at a spherical surface, mu2 by v minus mu1 by u is mu2 minus mu1 by r. We will calculate the value of r from this equation and put it here. And when we do that, we'll get the magnification in terms of mu1, mu2, the image distance and the object distance. When we do that, this is the value of magnification that we get. And this is the equation that you must remember. So when light gets refracted from a spherical surface, the final magnification obtained is such that it is equal to V divided by mu2 divided by U divided by mu1. I'll again repeat that mu2 is the refractive index of the medium into which the light is traveling and mu1 is the refractive index of the medium from which the light is coming. Again, as in all the other formulas, you'll have to substitute the values of V and U with proper sign here. Even in the case of the earlier formula for the refraction of light that we derived, you'll have to substitute all the values with proper sign. Those were the basic formulae in case of a spherical refracting surface. Now let's study what a lens is. Most IIT problems are actually based on lenses. So let's study more about them. You've already seen a lens. In fact, a magnifying glass like the one shown here has a lens here. When we think of lenses, we think of them as objects that magnify the image. 
right for example when you're viewing something you use eyeglasses so that you can get a better image a clearer image a magnified image so what essentially are lenses like if you have to define what is a lens what will you say a lens is any transparent medium bounded by two curved surfaces so remember we saw a spherical surface just now so if there are two spherical surfaces you know and they are both intersecting that's a lens for you there are two types of lenses and we'll you know uh, get to understand these types better as we proceed a medium bounded by two intersecting surfaces is called a convex lens and a medium bounded by two non intersecting surfaces is called a concave lens let's see what this means like this is just the definition but let's see what it means practically all the three lenses you see here are convex lenses you see the definition for convex lenses was that a medium bounded by two intersecting surfaces is a convex lens